Hello, and welcome to Making Sense of It. I am Mona Duncan, your moderator. And do you ever wonder why you do the things you do? Or do you ever look for a, an answer that it would just really be effective? Well, we're going to look at some of those things today. Um, get the PowerPoint up. And for several years, I worked with business internet. It was just a, I mean, I wasn't hired by them. I was just an employee. I was just a person that uh, attended their meetings, Business International, Business Networking International. And you had to attend every week, or if you could not attend, then someone needed to be there in your place. And every person during the, the uh, work, doing the meeting, uh, would tell something about themselves and what their business is and how that they could uh, become a more effective networker and give their elevator speech so that other people would want to be a part of their business also. So I thought we would just kind of look at that today. Uh, my elevator speech, I mean, I've developed several, but this is one of them. The question is, why do most people seem to think that to be happy, someone else must change. Well, because the most common belief is that we act only when we have been acted upon or the old cause and effect. Because this happened, this happened. But that's not necessarily so. Because this happened, this does not have to happen. Because we can think ahead and look ahead and make our own decisions. As much as we may think we are proactive, we're probably not. So here is the reality. We erroneously believe that when we have a difficult work situation or an unhappy relationship, certainly not my fault. It is because we are in the wrong place or have the wrong person. We are each self-determining and we can learn to make choices that will greatly improve job performance, as well as interpersonal skills. So a good referral for me would be bosses who want happier and more productive employees. I am Mona Duncan, Solution Principles, International Training with Hometown Quality of Life Flair. So have a couple of uh, quotes here. David Rockefeller, in talking about being a highly effective networker, said that the ability to deal with people is as purchasable a commodity as sugar or coffee. And I pay more for that ability than for any other under the sun. I provide that purchasable commodity of teaching people the ability to get along with others, therefore improving employee team building, customer service, and all interpersonal relationships. Well, is that not equating with reality therapy and choice theory? As we begin to learn those principles and concepts of Dr. William Blasser that have been a part of the universe forever, but he took them and just put them into such distinct and easy to remember ways to make them applicable that they are definitely a purchasable commodity as sugar or coffee. And then another with the BNI situation, we had our, most of our meetings at the Hilton and the Hilton's philosophy, which is a big hotel, as you know, is echo, meaning every contact has opportunity. And if we can really begin to think that and get that in our mind that every contact we have is a possible opportunity for us. And then Bill Flanagan says, if you learn to sell the value of your product, you won't have to defend your price. How many times? Oh, whoa, that's way too much. That's, that's too high. But if we can see the value of a product, the value of something that's going to be beneficial, uh, then we don't have to defend our price. So in looking at... Uh, highly effective networkers. I want to just 
share a, a kind of the way to, to begin to engage. One is to smile. It relieves your nervousness and it says to the other people around you that you are approachable. And then be genuinely interested, not only in what you have to say, but in what you can glean from someone else. Show interest in the person. You want to connect, not just conversate. <clears throat> and it's not necessarily the quantity of the conversation, but the quality of it. Is it something that is really meaningful? And then after you walk away, after you walk away from talking with this person, can you remember what they said? And if not, then you really weren't listening. And we need to listen. And then listening is wanting to hear what's being said. It is wanting to understand where the person is coming from. And it's wanting to remember. So just kind of put that in your pocket. I always want to listen to, to hear, to understand, and to remember. And then asking some clarification questions. But it's the questioning is to be inclusive, not intrusive. And, and then when asked in the right manner, people love talking about themselves and giving more information and letting you know where they're coming from. And, and then here's just a little tidbit that wear whatever makes you feel good about you because it will project in your aura if you are. And uh, also that pockets make you appear to be more powerful and that dark clothing also have that effect of being more powerful. So now we will begin to look at the seven habits of highly effective networkers. So take responsibility and initiative for getting your service or your product known in the community. Um, most papers, maybe not. Well, yeah, there's a lot of that. You can send something to the editor. Many times they will, they will print what you have suggested. Do not be victimized by thinking someone else has a bigger budget and therefore they can advertise. Because one-on-one -on -one and word of mouth is still the best advertising in the market. It's that connecting. Why? Why is it still? It's because it connects. Is to be friendly, to seek out places and ways to a variety of social gatherings. You begin to know where someone is and be, be invited to, to come and participate. Point number two is to give a clear sense of your personal mission. What is What are you wanting the people to know about what you do, about uh, we're looking at making sense of the thoughts of Dr. William Glasser and reality therapy and choice theory. So what is your business mission? What are your values? And become a, and they can become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, I know my mission in life is to help heal a hurting world. And certainly that is possible through principles that are real effective and uh, understanding the axioms of reality therapy. Point number three on seven habits of highly effective networkers. You it's realize that you do not have clients because you are in business. You are in business because you have clients and you need more clients to grow your business as well as to help those needing help. So networking is vital in getting new business. Point number four. Focus on <laughs> developing interpersonal relationships with new contacts. Think about mutual benefits where everyone can win because givers gain. Have a planned conversation starter. Think of three topics per event so that whenever you go there, you have something you can begin to talk to someone about, someone you had not met and chatted with before. But don't make those topics religious or political because, and then in the process of sharing with them your mission with reality therapy and choice theory, then have a benefit statement. What's the benefit of learning these principles? Number five, listening is a mostly lost art. 
find it and use it. Listen, really listen to what the other person is saying. And then ask questions about what they have said and be genuinely interested. Number six, when you work together with others, you increase your contact base and can be far more productive. So it is just always that, that ripple effect of knowing more and more people and that we can be more beneficial to them and they can learn new methods that is more accessible. And point number seven, we are beings of many dimensions. We have a body, we have a mind, we have a heart, we have a spirit. And we need to keep our body healthy. We need to keep our mind active by continually learning. We need to keep our heart building strong connections and relating with the key people in our life. And as for the spirit, make sure that you listen to your conscience and live within integrity. Because uh, so this is looking at the seven principles behind being an effective networker. And uh, the more we can network and let people know about choice theory and reality therapy, certainly the more we can help our world to be on a more even keel. So thanks for being here. And we'll talk with one another after the recording stops.